Hello, this is Dr. Gary Linder, physiologist and self-care ambassador, and I want to thank you in advance for taking a look at this short video. Its purpose is to introduce you to the self-care awakening. Our battle cry is be healthy by choice, not by chance. Because if we leave our health to chance, chances aren't very good that we're going to be healthy. It's like spinning a wheel of fortune and hoping that you land on the healthy pie. So statistically, let's look at what our chances of being healthy are if we leave our health to chance. According to the Centers for Disease Control, one half of all American adults age 18 and above have at least one chronic condition, 25% of us have two or more, and get this, by the time we're 65 years of age, 80% of us have one or more chronic diseases. These are responsible for seven out of 10 deaths here in the US and globally, and treating chronic disease accounts for 86% of our nation's healthcare costs. Much of this is attributed to pharmaceutical intervention. Let's face it, we are taught our entire lives to be consumers of modern medicine, especially pharmaceutical medicine. When we were young and we had a headache, our moms gave us baby aspirin. They didn't ask when we last drank some water. Every day, we are instructed from Big Pharma to ask our doctor about whatever pill they are talking about. If we think that there's a pill for everything, and many of us do, we miss the whole point of prevention and self-care. We are taught to treat rather than prevent, to react rather than be proactive about our health. We fill 4.3 billion prescriptions in the U.S. per year. The United States represents 4.4% of the world's population, yet consumes 75% of prescription medications. What's going on here? Why has chronic disease become our largest health issue? If we look at this retrospectively, um, let's look at it this way. In the early 1900s, the major cause of death was communicable disease, infectious diseases. The top three were pneumonia and flu, tuberculosis, and gastrointestinal infections. Deaths from infectious disease have gone way down compared to 1900, while the proportion of people dying from cancer has more than tripled. If we look at current trends, cancer rates are going up, heart disease and stroke are increasing, type 2 diabetes is nearly epidemic, as are a host of other chronic issues that contribute to our poor quality of life and our mortality. As a physiologist, the first question I have to ask is why? What's changed in the last hundred years? Have we changed biologically or have we altered everything else around us? We change biologically very slowly. So I think the latter is the more logical answer. The world we live in today is, a much, is much different than that of the 1900s. Within the self-care awakening, we look at four concepts that have contributed to the increase in chronic disease, namely environmental toxicity and that we carry a body burden of toxic chemicals, dehydration and how that affects our health, not getting enough sleep, sleep deficiency and the health ramifications of it, and weight matters. Excessive sugar consumption is what we focus on in that chapter. These are really simple concepts but they're ones that we don't pay enough attention to to be as healthy as we possibly can be. I think we can all agree that the world is a pretty toxic place. There is no such thing as a pristine environment. Toxins are in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. They're in our homes we live in, the offices where we work, and they're present in our children's schools. They are prevalent in our personal care and cleaning products. There are over 85,000 chemicals used in the U.S., but the EPA has required toxicity testing on fewer than 500 of these. There are 4.5 billion pounds released in the environment yearly, including 72 million pounds of recognized carcinogens. There are 10,000 new chemicals introduced every five years. Countless research studies have contributed to our understanding that we carry a burden a body burden of toxic chemicals. Each of us have more than 200 contaminants in our bodies and 93% of us have BPAs. Even more disturbing, a growing number of studies are finding hundreds of toxic chemicals in mothers and subsequently in their babies' bodies when they are born. 
The second self-care topic I'd like to talk about is water matters. Now we're nearly 70% water and water is vital to our existence and it's vital to our health. We just plain don't drink enough water. We have every other beverage choice, but we don't choose water. So let me say this, water is not just a beverage choice, it is an essential nutrient. When we think about it that way, then maybe we'll make a choice to drink more water. Failure to drink enough water leads to fatigue, weight gain, joint pain, headaches, ulcers, high blood pressure, kidney problems. And what if many of those issues could just be taken care of with drinking more water? We advocate that you drink half your body weight in ounces per day of healthy water. So if you weigh 200 pounds, drink 100 ounces of water a day. The National Institute of Health Research indicates that sleeping less than seven to eight hours a night or poor quality sleep is associated with many, many health risks. The average American adult sleeps less than seven hours per night, which may sound like a good amount of sleep, but in reality, it's a recipe for chronic sleep deficiency. Sleep is an essential physiological process. The body needs sleep, but in our fast paced, highly productive lives, we often sacrifice sleep for other activities. This is due in part to our perception of sleep as a non-productive endeavor, when from a physiological and health standpoint, it is our most productive time of our day. Dr. William C. Dement, the world's leading authority on sleep and the dangers of sleep deprivation states, healthy sleep has been empirically proven to be the single most important determinant in predicting longevity, more important than diet, exercise, or heredity. I think we all can agree that weight matters. In fact, this is the first time in history, this is from a recent uh, research study published in the British Medical Journal, The Lancet, that states this is the first time in history that obese people outnumber underweight people. So we are seeing uh, lots of lots of weight issues. So one of the major problems contributing to weight issues is excess sugar consumption. To put this into context, the average daily consumption of sugar by Americans in 1822 per individual was 9 grams a day. It is currently 152 grams a day. The average person in the U.S. consumes 130 pounds of sugar per year. Now this is nearly a 17-fold increase in less than 200 years. Um, and why is this? Well, there are 600,000 food items in the U.S and 80% of these have added sugar. We change very slowly biologically, yet we have drastically altered what we are eating and especially in the amount of sugar that we are consuming. To monitor sugar consumption, I suggest read food labels. It's also helpful to understand that four grams of sugar is equivalent to one teaspoon. It's recommended that a healthy daily consumption of sugar should not exceed 24 grams or six teaspoons for women and 36 grams or nine teaspoons for men. Sugar is also highly addictive. Sugar activates the reward center in our brain the same way as many drugs. It provokes similar cravings and withdrawal symptoms. To break the sugar addiction, read food labels to keep your daily consumption at a healthy level and let protein help. Eating protein is an easy way to curb sugar, sugar cravings. High protein foods digest slowly, keep you feeling full longer, and protein doesn't make your blood sugar spike the way refined carbs and sugars do. Protein shakes are ideal for this. I know you have many choices when it comes to your health, but that's kind of the point of the whole self-care awakening. Be healthy by choice and not leave your health to chance. And let me ask you this. Wouldn't it be a good idea to reduce our body burden of toxic chemicals? Could we be healthier if we were hydrated every day? Would we be healthier if we had a good quality night's sleep where our body could rejuvenate and repair? And how about if we could take care of some weight issues just by, just by being well hydrated, sleeping well, and reducing the amount of sugar we consume on a daily basis? As self-care ambassadors, we advocate for Nikan. Nikon products feature innovations that set them apart from anything else in the market. They combine traditional wisdom with modern technology and advanced engineering. The result is a product line that represents practical, natural solutions for dealing with life's everyday challenges.
Break the sugar addiction with Ken's Vital Balance, Neekin's Protein Shake, and achieve and maintain a healthy weight with Neekin's Everyday Organic Weight Management System and many other, other nutritional supplements. Get a quality night's sleep using our Kenko Sleep Products. The Neekin Sleep System is designed around the physiology of sleep to give you the deepest, most restful sleep imaginable. We can improve our hydration with the Pi Mag Waterfall and the Neekin Sport Bottle. Neekin Active Wellness Products and Technologies provide an integrated approach to decrease the ingestion and absorption of toxic chemicals and to help our bodies eliminate them to reduce our body burden. Let's consider this for a minute. If we list all these symptoms, they are indicative of many different types of chronic issues or chronic diseases. But they are also symptoms of environmental toxicity, dehydration, poor sleep, or excess sugar consumption. Thank you very much for taking a look at the Self-Care Awakening. I suggest getting back to the person who directed you to this video to get your questions answered or get more information about self-care and Neekin Active Wellness products so you too can be healthy by choice.